Yo, what up my good people and welcome back to the channel. All right, in this episode, we're just gonna kick back and watch some strange TikToks. Some of these TikToks might really have you sitting back in your chair like, oh my gosh. Ethan Hawke, what do you think happens when we die? Um, you ready? I don't think we die. I don't think that we have uh, an understanding of the divine concept of time. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we're any more capable of understanding a clock than a dog is. And um, I think something much bigger is going on than we're aware of in our day-to-day -day routines. So I don't think I have the intelligence or the DNA makeup to answer that question. As we're going through, we ride up on this sinkhole in the middle of the course on a part three. And you can tell it is literally washing away as we go. I sit down on the edge, just because why would I not sit on the edge? So then you can see my buddy's filming, and right when he's filming, it falls away, it washes out. So I get up and I run away, and then I start filming from the other side, other angle. Sorry, I'm, I'm, a, I'm voice recording this on my golf cart. Also, it's my first time ever making a TikTok, so bear with me. You can see where I was sitting ends up doing the exact same thing and totally washes away. You'll see it just right about now. So if I would have been sitting there, I'd be swimming. And the whole entire part three is about to be underwater here in about an hour. Yeah, sitting on the edge of a sinkhole is not the brightest idea. My man talking about, I'd be swimming in there. I'm like, nah, bro, you'd be drowning in there. I remember a couple of weeks ago, I talked about people on TikTok talking that there was a artificial sun placed. Yeah, up. during the solar eclipse. Yeah. Did you know there's actually Russia developed a satellite that mimics an artificial sun? Really? For what purpose? I'll tell you. So this space engineer, his name, Vladimir Siromarenikov, came up with this concept of this giant satellite that would open up and have these mirrors on it that would mimic the sun. And the whole point of it was to help with farming in Soviet Russia at the time. It ended up getting supposed supposedly decommissioned, but they said that this satellite was capable of spontaneously igniting buildings and cities and drying up lakes and rivers. They tested it in France too, at night, and they said it was 50 times stronger than a full moonlight. Oh my gosh. The satellite was called Zinamya. I'm convinced that we're still using it in some capacity. And I only say that because we talk about DEWs, direct energy weapons, and like, can they not use that to start Info. fires? Yeah. I'm convinced that they figured out a better way to use it. Uh, yeah. Think about the, the Canada fires that we covered last year. It's like just, yeah. Guys, there's two suns. 85% of all high blood pressure diagnosis, 85% are what we call idiopathic, meaning they're of unknown origin. So you go to the doctor and they say, hey, you've got high blood pressure. Um, well, what's wrong? Well, your heart, your EKG is normal, your EEG is normal, your heart and lung sounds are normal, your co diet contrast study is normal, your cardiac catheterization is normal. We tested your heart every which way we could. There's nothing wrong with your heart. We're still going to medicate your heart anyway. <laughs> you're going to get a beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, diuretic. Even though we don't know what's wrong, we're still going to give you medication. You're going to be on this for the rest of your life. Well, then why do I have it? Well, because your father had it or your grandmother had it. That's patently false. The majority of what's happening is there is a amino acid in the blood called homocysteine. You have it, I have it, you have it, we all have it in our bloodstream. Some people have um, a genetic impairment where they, they don't metabolize this homocysteine very well. In other words, they don't break homocysteine down and turn it into a harmless amino acid called methionine. You can take a simple amino acid called TMG. You could go to GNC and get it right now, 27 bucks a month. You could take this amino acid. You could begin to metabolize this homocysteine. What happens when homocysteine rises in the human bloodstream is as it's cruising by the inside lining of the arteries, right? It irritates the artery. If you irritate an artery, it clamps down. If you make the pipes smaller in a fixed system, this is a closed system. If I make the pipes smaller, pressure goes up. There's nothing wrong with your heart. The blood vessels are constricted. You take an amino acid, metabolize homocysteine, the blood pressure, the, the vascular system relaxes, pressure returns to normal. <laughs>
when I be having dreams that I'm still at work, this is exactly how I am. But yo, that head bop at the beginning had me weak. Crazy things I've seen on the internet today. Supermarkets like Walmart and Kroger are deciding to take price gouging to a new level. These stores are going to be rolling out electronic labels where they can change the pricing of items every 10 seconds. They're calling this dynamic pricing or surge pricing, which is just a pretty name for price gouging, where they can raise the prices of water and ice cream in the summer. Or if there was a hurricane and there's a demand on certain items, they can raise the prices of those too, again, every 10 seconds. I don't know if this is true for Walmart, but Kroger specifically plans on putting cameras on these little electronic tags because it will determine prices based on your age and gender. Of course, these stores are saying that they would never, ever use their electronic price tags for price gouging. And I think that it's cute that they think that we believe them. People in California are going to be able to add their driver's licenses to their Apple wallet or Google wallet. This has some people scared because it's like one step closer to everything being digital. Are you guys, there's a skimmer on here. Are you gonna pay for that? Okay, don't do that. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that, why? What happened? This is the skimmer. What? See that, a skimmer. See that? You see here? It's not broken. It's a skimmer. It's how you uh, take people's money, get their credit card information. It's how you get people's credit card information. The, the scammer will, will put this on. People will use their credit card. It will capture their credit card information. And that's what happens. I love watching people explain what a skimmer is to people who more than likely are the ones that put the skimmer there. I don't know how these people are so good at spotting them though, because they blend in so well. People who are brand new to remote viewing in the class were blowing their own minds on how well they could see things they had no idea about. All they give you is a reference number. They give you a blank sheet of paper and they say, B43, go. That's it. Yeah. B43, it's what is that It's the fucking mean? number on the envelope of the image that you're supposed to look into the envelope and see what's in there. Day one, week one at the Monroe Institute for Remote Viewing, you get an envelope with a photograph. You don't even get the envelope. You can't touch it. They've got a stack of envelopes up front. They say your name, and then they give you a reference number out of their stack of envelopes is up at the front. And so you get a, a letter and a number, or just sometimes a number, or just sometimes a couple of letters or whatever it is, and that's it. That's all you get. And yet, no fucking way am I going to be fishing in there. And there. That's just off tap. Right where they're broken, it's right where I normally fucking have my anchor. Not today. Man, that is wild, eh? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And that ocean looked at that man in his boat and said, get over here, bro. What in the world was chasing this man, Poseidon? Look, y'all, another scam that's going on right now. Let me get y'all, put y'all on. <laughs> Especially people that do DoorDash, Uber Eats, any delivery. So I'm like, let me do DoorDash real quick a little bit. Okay, cool. So I get an order for Taco Bell for a pack of sauce. One pack of sauce. No food, no drink, no nothing. And then I get a call from DoorDash. Um, you know, the number that you can call through through DoorDash. And it's this detective saying, I'm Detective so-and-so, bash number this and that. And I'm from the Houston Police Department, all this other stuff. And he's saying that the order was placed fraudulently on a car that wasn't there, so whatever. And he was like, can you pull over? Let's do a three-step verification process. And they're going to reimburse you the $19 or $20 or whatever. And then he asked for my card number, my CCV, my CVV or whatever it is, security code, and the expiration date. And that's when I knew it was a scam and I called DoorDash and they flagged the whole account. So y'all be careful, be mindful, share this with people that DoorDash. If you get a call about a detective, it's fraud. It is fraud. Don't deliver.
Yeah, if I don't know the number that's calling my phone, I simply just don't pick it up. I would have caught on to it being a scam because why would a detective send you the refund and not DoorDash? But the law says if you made a mistake, you rescind Whose law said that? The law of the United States? Yeah. Well, who controls the law of the United States? Legislations. Yeah, Supreme legislations Court. that have their whole own agenda. Laws mean nothing. You give me the currency of a country and you can, have all, you can make all the rules in the world. And that's all that matters. Who's in control? You've actually seen what you believe may well be alien technology, an implant. I have. What did you see? I saw a technical device uh, that had been removed, excised by the Department of Veterans Affairs by a surgeon, a trained physician from a U.S. military service member who claimed to have a UAP encounter. The physician claimed that the object tried to run on him or evade being excised. So let me get this right. This, this object, whatever it is, it's a constructed object. It's a technological object. It's a technological object enveloped in some sort of biological capsule. The current theory is that that capsule is there to fool the body uh, as not to create some sort of immune response to a, to a foreign object. The physician you spoke to described that object apparently trying to intelligently avoid being captured by the human doctor. Correct. That is what the doctor reported. To the index and a new study tonight finding that many baby and toddler food products sold in the U.S. do not meet health standards set by the World Health Organization. Researchers at the George Institute for Global Health say 70% of foods don't have enough protein. Nearly half include too much sugar. Infant formulas, fortified milk, and oral electrolytes were not included in the study because they're strictly regulated by the FDA. <laughs> Man, I would hate to be whatever they're running towards. Them five big old killers right there. Yeah, you better hope you got a big old pow pow. Been in the drive through. Thank God I know how to cook. And where is this at? At McDonald's? In their defense, anything in the state of California is considered cancerous. Amazon's being pretty shady right now. I could be wrong. It's a possibility. I'm not, though. I'm like 99.923% sure that I'm right. Um, so I have an Amazon Prime account that I pay yearly for. And I mean, it's not a lot, but it's enough to be like, hey, that's some cheddar cheese out of my wallet that I'm not going to get back, but I'm getting free shipping and Amazon video. So that's great, right? Well, I went to go buy a thing for my sister because she has subscription commitment issues. <laughs> she doesn't have a Prime account, even though she buys so much stuff on Amazon. But if she wants it in like two days or, or for free shipping, she'll contact me. I'll buy it for her and then she'll demo me later, right? So I sent her the screenshot of how much it was. Now watch. She went to buy it and it was $90.66. Starting price was $80.15, but you had a $3 shipping fee. Now hers would show up in two weeks if she bought it. Now watch when I buy it. So when I buy it, it'll show up today between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m., which is amazing. Same day free shipping is, is awesome. I love that. But is it free? Because look at that. $89.95, I get free shipping, but it starts off $9 higher than when my sister, who doesn't have a Prime membership, tries to buy it. And then my total is $96.92. So it's $6 more expensive to have a Prime membership. How does that make any sense? What I think they're doing is they're giving you a cheaper price to not have Amazon, but you'll get it later, right? And then, then once you get the subscription, they're like, well, you're not gonna, you're not, gonna not have it, so how would you know the difference? I, I, I do, I do because of this. This is freaking bogus, dude. I'm no lawyer, but I feel like that's a class action lawsuit. Not to mention the items available to Prime on like the same day or two day delivery, but after ordering, you get hit with a notification saying it's gonna be a later delivery. This is footage of the newest Neuralink patient playing a video game, controlling it with his mind. Elon then followed up saying hundreds of people will have the Neuralink in a few years, in five years, tens of thousands, and in 10 years, millions of people will have the Neuralink. For people who lost their limbs, they can attach parts of the Optimus robot, and with Neuralink, they can control the limbs with their own mind. Take parts of the Optimus, Optimus humanoid robot, and you combine that with the Neuralink. Let's say somebody has lost their arms or legs, uh, well, we, we could actually attach an Optimus arm or Optimus legs uh, and uh, do a Neuralink implant so that the the motor commands from your brain that go, would go uh, to your, your biological arms now go to your robot arms or robot legs. Um, and again, you'd, you'd have basically...
That's why I say the song Closed on Sunday is the hardest record ever made. It's hard as the NWA record because it's talking about protecting your kids from the indoctrination of the media. The thousands and thousands of images that are fed to children by the age of six or seven. And within those images, there are images mixed in that we don't know about as parents that are purposely mixed in to lower the kids' superpower and esteem so that they can be more susceptible to consumption and feel that they need to consume and become a part of the robotic numeric system that controls so many, so much of the media. Close on Sunday. You meet people on the same level of psychological wound as you. Oh. You also leave people where if you evolve out of that and they haven't been able to. Wow. Which I think goes back to one of the things, one of the pieces of content I heard you talk about, which is like the sense of smell connecting to someone's stress levels or anxiety levels. Like you'll kind of attract a similar nervous system or I guess a certain similar like, I don't know, stress level? Yeah, it's, right? it's not smell. It's sensing, sensing, not sensing. through smell, the level of the stress hormone, yeah. Interesting. But that's short term, right? But the inner child and shadow stuff is longer term. Gosh, that's fascinating. Yeah. So you think we attract people based on our psychological wounds? 100%. Wow. And as we start to heal and grow, if the other person's not healing and growing, we kind of pull away. Mm -hmm. Wow. For two individuals with the same trauma bond to become attracted to each other based off that connection, I mean, it does make sense. It's all frequencies, in my opinion. You attract what you resonate with. I'm giving a shout. I ordered this frog magnet off of Amazon. All you do is just reach down there and just pick some rug up like that. Ain't that neat? I'm not real sure how it works, but just <laughs> like magic. <laughs> magic. You know? And then you just take them outside, let them go. I was sitting here thinking like, did he just say a frog magnet? But then like two seconds later, he proceeds to pick up a frog with it. Archaeologists roll their eyes every time you say the word Atlantis. The Younger Dryas begins 12,800 years ago with a cataclysm, with a puzzling, mysterious rise in sea level at the same point. Thousand years of freezing temperatures, mass extinctions of animal species all over the world. And then 11,600 years ago, global temperature shoots up the last of the ice caps collapse into the sea. Sea level rises enormously. But that is precisely the date that Plato, which is the earliest surviving reference to Atlantis, that's precisely the date he gives for the destruction of Atlantis, 11,600 years before our time. He puts it this way, that his ancestor Solon visited Egypt. And we know about that visit. It's historically recorded. That visit to Egypt was in 600 BC. And there Solon claimed to have been told by Egyptian priests about this great advantage advanced civilization that once existed, but that angered the gods and was destroyed in an enormous flood. And Solon asked those Egyptian priests, when did this happen? And they said, oh, 9,000 years ago. Well, do the math. That's in 600 BC. That's 9,000 years before 600 BC. We call that 9,600 BC. That's 11,600 years ago. That's exactly the date of the end of the Younger Dryas, and it's exactly the date of what is called Meltwater Pulse 1b, one of the biggest single rises overnight in sea level that ever occurred. So if Plato made it up, it's really weird that he picked a date that is precisely a date that coincides coincides with the latest geological evidence on cataclysmic sea level rise at the end of the ice age. 1933 is when they started monetizing us and pledging us as collateral for the debt. Now, to register, the word register means to abandon. Yeah. And when you register a car or a birth or a house, you're giving it to the government. You're giving your legal title to the government and you only retain equitable title, which means that you have the use of that property. The government allows you to use it, thinking that you own it. Clear evidence of this is anyone who owns a house, look at their mortgage and you're referred to as the tenant. Not the owner, the tenant. So if you think you own your house, you're mistaken. Same with your car. The reason why they can impound your car is because you registered it and under maritime admiralty salvage laws, they come along and, and they adopt it. In the case of the birth registry, they adopt the abandoned child. People have been preaching this for years for those that have been paying attention. How can we actually own anything when they tax us for anything we attempt to own? 
Did you know that there's like over 40 documented cases of someone getting an organ transplant and then taking on the freaking characteristics of the donor? So on the left hand side, this is Terry Cottle and he was married to his wife Cheryl. And unfortunately he took his own life by shooting himself in the head. Sony Graham was the man that received his heart as a transplant. And he wanted to contact Cheryl to tell her how grateful he was for, you know, the sacrifice and all the pain and everything like that. And they actually started dating and they got married. Now, the weird thing is, 12 years later, he took his life in the same way. And if you look online, there's like so many things where it's like personality changes following a heart transplant. Changes in heart transplant recipients that parallel the personalities of their donor. So this is coined as cellular memory, and the whole idea is that memories are not only stored in the brain, but a psychosomatic network extending to the body, internal organs, even your skin. Now this case that I brought up, could it be cellular memory? Sure. Could it also be maybe she drove the men to do this? Yes. But the fact that there are so many medical journals with published articles about personality changes that happen after a transplant, I think is really, really fascinating. It's in my brain. Do you know that? It's living rent free. I can't get it out. You did that. Yeah, it's hypnosis. <laughs> Why is she laughing? This man's being serious. This is what I'll be talking about. This. I can't even keep that picture up for long like that because it's going to wear me out sitting here looking at it. Now, I have so much to say about this. Elon decides that he wants to invite his robotic robot, whatever you want to call it, girlfriend on the date. Let that sit there. You haven't heard, Elon announces his first girlfriend with artificial intelligence said that he invited her out for dinner and that he enjoyed the experience. He also said that he enjoyed the experience with calling her smart, beautiful, and obedient. <clears throat> not gonna wear me out and y'all not about to push this on me. Y'all not about to push this on me because then it makes me feel like I'm a part of the basket, basket case uh, uh, industry. I'm not a part of the basket case industry. I'm not a part of any of this. <laughs> I'm not a part of this. I'm not. Lord, Lord, I'm not a part of this. They did this. I ain't got nothing to do with this. The reason why I have an issue with this is because God is the creator of mankind. He is the creator of all things. We are getting to a place where we are trying to idol worship, we are trying to replace God's job. Once she said he invited her out to dinner, I'm over here thinking like, what? I mean, of course, did she really even have an option to decline? Elon Musk would be the type of man to build a robot and take it out on a date. What up, y'all? So I'm from Bermuda and um, I shouldn't be telling y'all this because I might, I probably will get in trouble for this because it's our nation's secret. But I just feel like the people should know, like it's, the people should know, you know? Um, so I'm from Bermuda, I'm a Bermudian, but we're also triangulans. Like if you're a part of the Bermuda Triangle, you're a triangulan, also known as like Atlantean. We're not every triangulan is an Atlantean, but we are also Atlanteans. Um, same way Italians are Europeans. Um, but what I wanted to let y'all know is that like every Bermudian knows where Atlantis is. Like every Bermudian knows where the lost city is and I just feel like people should know that you know what I mean like by high school every Bermudian knows it's just like a rite of passage um so yeah if anything happens to me it's not the storm that's coming um 
because we're protect like in in the Bermuda Triangle Bermudians are protected nothing happens to us so like I said if something does happen to me and I go missing I was just talking to my mom about um, something I learned today and I need to share it with all of you if you get something in the mail and it is not something that you've ordered such as like um, I know a lot of people are getting like rings somebody got like a grill another person got like a really pretty necklace um, and a bracelet bracelet and they were like that's so weird it has my name on it and everything and then it was like if you want to see how you got this or whatever scan this QR code and it'll explain it um, if you scan the QR code it's actually hackers and they're gonna hack into your phone so and they are gonna take everything like one of the ladies, her bank accounts, everything. Completely just and absolutely nuts. So I was telling my mom to be careful that if she gets something that she didn't order to make sure that she doesn't scan the QR code. And they're saying you can keep it from what I'm, I'm hearing. Keep the product. But this is just a way for them to hack you. So, and they actually have like return addresses and everything. It looks so legit, you guys. So just... Be careful and tell the older generation because my mom is telling our older generation and our family because it's something like people would get and be like, oh my God, this is so cool. And then it's like, scan this QR code. Don't do it. Love you, bye. All right, my good people, that shall be a wrap for this episode. As always, really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Before you roll out, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. All right, hold it down out there, my good people, and I'll see you all in the next episode.